What's up guys, main man Sui here, hoping you're all doing awesome as always, and welcome back to another reaction video with me, main man. We're gonna watch a video by Polygon called How to Get Started with Fighting Games and Have a Nice Time. And that's pretty wholesome, have a nice time. People forget about that, but in the end it's like, it's not about get good, learn the matchup, no, it's about having fun. <laughs> I feel like people forget about that sometimes. Make sure you have fun. If you're getting frustrated and annoyed at the game, I'm always like, well, take a break. Why are you smashing your head against the wall, forcing yourself to play Tekken every day? T take a break. <laughs> it does wonders. <laughs> always does wonders for me. But so we're going to start watching this video. People tell me it's an incredible video and some really great advice for people starting out with fighting games or even for people who are, who are already playing fighting games. So I can't wait to watch this and hopefully I can add something to the video. For a long time, I'd look at fighting games and I'd say, that looks so cool. Oof, sorry. I serious, seriously don't want to block anything here. So we're going to do this. But I don't think it's for me. I had done some casual button mashing, but I never dove into the deeper mechanics. When I saw the gulf between what I was able to do and what others were doing, I told myself there was no way I'd ever be able to get there. Then, a few years ago, I decided to try for real. Was it worth it? Man, uh, nice hair. Yes. I can tell you without exaggeration that fighting games have brought me more joy than anything else I've put my gaming hours into. It's a distinct category of enjoyment unto itself, constructed from the greatest pleasures of gaming, the childlike joy of hitting buttons and seeing cool shit happen. I just want to add immediately that it's amazing that uh, fighting games, he has this very wholesome approach and it's given him a lot of positive feedback and energy, it seems. Like fighting games have really uh, given him something, uh, really seems to like them. Um, but uh, this, this is interesting where I feel like fighting games have really big highs and really big lows. It's, it's so different compared to playing like a MOBA or Counter-Strike or the most popular games tend to be team-based, right? And uh, I don't know, uh, people tend to get salty in competitive game environments. And it's, it's just a, such an interesting phenomenon to me. How often you see when you play a MOBA, like someone loses a match or even wins and they're salty and they're like, it's, it's never their own fault. <laughs> they will never criticize themselves and look back on their gameplay and say like, well, did I make mistakes this match? It's always, oh, it was either the opponents or it was my teammates. But that is so interesting with fighting games because you don't have teammates. It's all on you. And then it always turns into, it was the opponent. And it was, <laughs> it's either his character or he's mashing, he's playing cheap or, you know, it's interesting how psychology comes at play. The slow burn tension of outmaneuvering an opponent in a strategy game, the dark soul satisfaction of studying a boss's patterns and exploiting their weaknesses. It's meditative, it's rhythmic, it's sports, it's therapeutic, it's communal. It's the closest you're ever going to come to feeling like Rocky or your favorite shonen protagonist. It's made me happier, and it's made my brain feel better. It is absolutely worth it. But it takes a lot of work, and looking at that from the outside can be oh, overwhelming yeah. and intimidating. This guide is for people who have been studying that water and thinking about jumping in. Hopefully, you can use this video oh, as a he has gentle a Kazuya Tekken one ending pool. shirt. Here's I already my ten love step guide for getting into fighting games without losing your mind. Step one. <laughs> without you losing want to your do mind. It. Okay. This one's kind of obvious, but it's also essential. Your desire to get into fighting games is going to be the thing that fuels you through the hard stuff. If you're fighting game curious, but you're not sure if you're ready to take the dive, fighting there is some other curious. stuff you can do to gradually expose <laughs> I love yourself. That term. For starters, watch some. I'm matches. a bit curious. Right. Oh, nice. Oh, he wasn't looking. It's really exciting to see the top players just going nuts. Here are some of my favorites: Goichi versus Sonic Fox at Evo 2018 rules. It's like an unstoppable force versus an immovable object. Uh, playing them right now. Thank you. Goichi's defense is like an iron wall, but Sonic Fox's offense is just relentless. You know that Sonic Fox is going to do some work as soon as they get an How opening, much does Dragon so Ball uh, fighters so play like Marvel versus Capcom? What? 
Oh, that's such, still such an amazing moment. Lil Margin's whole Evo 2018 run was also oh, right, Pickles. Was oh, such a presence. Was an American player. Japanese a geese, but historically dominated by Korean I haven't seen him in a million. <laughs> so it's a combination of an underdog. I haven't seen him in a million years. Advantage. I feel. Plus, he's playing a super fun character with big splashy moves. But it's not just about what the players are doing. Hearing the audience and commentators get excited and pop off for the big moments that will help you That was still such an amazing run. March in 2018 so Evo. Hit because he's got that V-trigger. No, it's going to hit here into the critical arc. Textbook. If you're in the mood to chill and watch some super thoughtful, accessible video essays about the underlying mechanics and philosophies of fighting games, pop on Gerald Lee, a.k.a. Core A Gaming. My personal favorite is why button mashing doesn't work. Also, follow oh, some fighting game people on Twitter that and was Twitch and stuff. Jackie Chan, There's a lot of people who doing am really I interesting with streams and Brad Allen, I think, had to jump to in for Ron Smorenberg. He couldn't do the choreography like, well enough. We yeah, sorry, I'm a Jackie Chan nerd. You thought it was, he unplugged yeah. that shit off the wall. Let's get money. There will be a lot of in-jokes and terminology you don't understand, but you'll pick it up soon enough through context clues. And if you need a helping hand, check out the infill.net fighting game glossary. They have explanations of all the jargon. Pick a game. Pick a game. A frequently asked question among the fighting game curious is, what's a good fighting game for a new player? And the definitive answer is literally whichever game you're interested in. I'm so serious about this. Yeah, I, I don't even see how this is a question. Like, wh what game should I pick? I want to get into fighting games. What fighting game should I pick? The one that you organically are attracted to. It's a bit like people ask me with Tekken all the time on my Twitch, like, what character should I start with? And I'm like, the character you find cool. I, I guess some people might have the approach like, uh, I want a very practical approach. I really want to win. Who should I play? And I might say, well, you know, Asuka, Leroy, if you just want a winning machine as easily as possible. But my, the way to go about it, in my opinion, is to go with the character you, you like. This character visually appeals to me. They have a cool martial art. I like their animations. I like the voice actor, the intro poses. Uh, or maybe you're, I mean, it's a fighting game, you, but you might even look at the lore and say, oh, you know, there's something interesting there. I don't know, but isn't that just common sense? These games are already hard enough. It's like, I don't know how motivating it's going to be to just pick up Leroy and say, I want someone to win easily with. You're just going to get frustrated once you, when you start losing. It's like, follow your heart. Pick the character that's cool. That, in my opinion, is going to build motivation because it's, it's organic, right? It appeals to you. You need to follow your heart. Look at <laughs> gameplay trailers, watch some big matches. Whichever game makes you feel the, the spark. This guy and me, we, we, would, uh, we would that jive. That spark will be what fuels you when things get I should, hard. I should go I grab a beer with this guy. I love and pro wrestling. So for me, the game that grabbed my attention was Tekken. The pace of animation is oh, a bit slower Tekken. than the stuff in okay. 2D fighters like Street Fighter or Guilty Gear. So it was kind of like watching a choreographed fight scene from the movies in Wrestling I Love. Wrestling. Before I understood <laughs> mid-low mix-ups and frame data, I understood the, the King did a sick running power bomb wrestling. and I loved to see it. You gotta find your We're access. We're in Tennessee you now! You like anime? You like nasty gore? You like ponies? Get it. But while you're following your heart, you do need to pay attention to one annoying wrinkle. Because of the old COVID, you're mostly going to be playing online, and not all games have great net play. In games that oh, use delay God based sakes. net code, response COVID times can or be not, slow. online gaming is where it's at these days. Everyone plays online. But I can't stress enough, like, if, if you want to stay motivated with Tekken, dear lord, go, go to a local tournament and just try to meet like-minded people. If you meet people you, you like, even outside of Tekken, like they're really good people and you want to be friends with them, and then you just happen to have this great passion in common with them, Tekken. Uh, it's like, yeah, it's, it's a wonderful thing to have, and it will motivate you with the game. If you mix like offline sessions with friends and online play, oh, you have a much greater shot of staying in love with the game than only going online to play ranked or quick matches, so. 
sluggish. The good news is that if you're new, you probably won't know what you're missing out on until you taste that crisp offline stuff. If you know that you're mostly going to be playing online, consider choosing a game with rollback netcode. Rollback is an ingenious net play solution that pretty much eliminates the sluggishness inherent to online fighting games. If you want a cool explainer on how it works, check out this video by Core A Gaming. Oh wow. Here are some games with pretty good netcode. If you're not sure if a game has rollback, just Google it, and you'll either find a bunch of blog posts like Punch Kicker as rollback. Tekken 7 or limits, a bunch of limits rollback like, frames. How come Punch more Kicker doesn't have games. rollback? That limits it to three frames. Uh, and according to Harada, that's maximum with the Tekken engine. Another common question is what do I need to start playing fighting games? And the good news is if you play other types of games, you're good to go. You need a console or a PC and a controller, and that's it. Fight. Also, a good internet connection. More on that later. You might think you need a big fancy fight stick, but there's really no a direct correlation big, between fancy, performance and juicy fight Lots stick. of the best players in the world grew up using readily available console controllers and still absolutely kill with them. And the skills and knowledge you develop using one type is on of pad. are totally transferable. Majin is on pad. There's just a short recalibration I think period Color Core where you need to develop pad. some new muscle memory. That said, Basically, if you have the resources and the inclination, pump. fight sticks can Joey be Fury? a lot of fun. They're tactile Shadow? and hefty, and they make good noises. <laughs> They're so, so let's talk big. About Most of the sticks you'll find are ball top square gate, meaning the joystick moves around in a square frame. It makes it easy to lock in important fighting game positions like down back. You can just physically feel it. Another less common configuration is bat top K lever. These ones don't mm. have a gate and they use a rubber grommet to return to the neutral position. The result is that they're a bit spongier and you gotta be more precise with your inputs. Unless you're planning to go all in on Tekken or you grew up on these, I'd steer clear for now. Finally, hitbox style controllers replace the joystick with more arcade buttons. They take some getting used to, but they allow for extremely precise inputs. Are these controllers but maybe are the broken. biggest benefit is that they're pretty box, damn ergonomic. Mix box, keyboard. Cranking on a fight stick can stress out your shoulders broken. and fingers. My elderly thumbs don't have what it takes to mash on a D-pad anymore. A hitbox is comfy. I can just say uh, straight away here that uh, arcade stick is more, more a cultural thing. Culture. You know, the, the old arcades, uh, I grew up with that, so I, I love the feeling I'm an arcade stick, and it's super fun to play on, in my opinion. But I think it's arguably the weakest controller. Uh, it sounds weird, but even a, uh, a D-pad is faster. You'll move your thumb faster, faster movement and inputs than you do on arcade stick. And arcade stick, compared to hitbox, Mix box, a uh, keyboard, ain't got shit on it. These are way more precise and way faster. So arcade stick, it's it's for fun, cultural thing. Uh, but in my opinion, it's arguably the weakest controller. Let's you nail your input. and it's also the hardest controller to play on, to pick up and play on. All of these other controllers and uh, pad, contr uh, normal Dual Sense, it's easier. Arcade stick is very hard strength. to pick up. Most controllers work with PC and one type of console. If you ever plan on attending a local event, I'd suggest going for a controller that will work with the PS4. That's what they're going to be using there. Tuning your control setup is fun and it can become a hobby of its own. But the biggest message I want to give you is do not gear gate yourself. Don't put an artificial boundary between you and the thing you want to do. You're just denying yourself the pleasure of playing and getting better. But let's talk about a real boundary. Step four, pipe check. Pipe check, check my pipe. If your connection to your opponent is not steady, you're simply not check gonna have that, a nice time pipe. playing with each other. You'll be more likely to biff your execution, but more importantly, it'll just be sluggish and jittery. So most of the online fighting game community adhere religiously to the ethernet cable. Because it's, oh, direct that firing what takes he a meant. big failure point check that the pipe. networking pipeline. The anti-Wi-Fi sentiment online is severe enough that it will affect your experience. Lots of games have Wi-Fi indicators. Yeah, you don't want to play on Wi-Fi. I mean, that's just if common sense. That you'll have a dodgy connection. That means you should get wired up. When I had roommates, I would run cable down my hallway when I was playing and then coil it up when I was done, so our common spaces weren't a constant tripping hazard. This might involve some negotiation and compromise, but it's absolutely worth it.
When I was in my teens living at home, I would have a 20 so meter cable in our old family house. Players? 20 the answer, meters. Regardless just, of the just game, to is whoever you think looks be cool. able to play well. Once again, your enthusiasm is going to be the emotional well from which you draw the motivation to grind out combos and do the difficult work of learning. And you don't always have to pick the Ryu of the game to learn the fundamentals. For example, when I started Tekken 7, I played King because I liked that he was a huge kitty cat man who did all my favorite kitty wrestling cat, moves. Man. He's a great character, but he also has a big <laughs> It'd loved to hear about that King. he's picked hey, up kitty over cat. decades of Tekken games. He's got some complicated inputs, and as a grappler, he approaches combat differently from most of the roster. But I liked him. I liked the way his moves looked. I liked his vibe. So I had the motivation King to put in the work. Later, when I picked up Guilty Gear Strive, I went with Soul Bad Guy because he's kind of the Ryu of that game, and he was really strong at the time. I thought that having a high tier Wasn't character Wasn't he completely broken on release? Series like his standing too was like so a mid check a that was plus and some I fell block. Off and told myself maybe Guilty Gear wasn't for me. A few months later, I came back and I tried the character who I really wanted to play all along. I love the Temkin. Clicked. I loved looking at my little guy. I loved his gigantic hands and his my booty little, drop. My little guy. And I love busting. <laughs> so I was motivated Busta. to play and learn. Don't let tier lists or meta discussions dissuade you early on. Pick who you think looks cool. Couldn't agree more. I literally more. cannot say this enough. Learn how to play. Yeah, unfortunately, you'll see a lot of top players or fighting game content creators go, they just nerfed my main. I guess he's not my main no mo. Now I'm playing this guy. And it's like, yeah, I've never been a fan of that approach. Like, I've been a Kazuya main for only, wait, wait I've been a Kazuya main since 1996. That's a few years. It's only 26 years, though. <laughs> so no matter how trash that character's been, I've played him. Now, luckily... He's been solid for the most part, but in Tek Tekken 6, it was the highest execution character, and he was below middle tier. <laughs> so that's what I did for a few years. Uh, but so yeah, you your follow guy, your hot training mode and start hitting buttons. See what they do. See how it feels. Some games like Guilty Gear Strive and Mortal Kombat have decent tutorials that explain fighting game fundamentals and include challenges to test your knowledge. Any fighting game worth playing will also have a full command list in the start menu. If you like what you're feeling, hop onto YouTube and search for some character guides. This is a oh! really cool thing about fighting games. That's they my are video. Complicated. There are hurdles to overcome, but that complexity is also what makes them so. Uh, it's my video and fun at to the play. top. If you and people search want other Armor people King to guide. share in that fun, so they'll put in hours and hours and hours of work to make wonderful guides. Like and subscribe. Character guides are great. Looking at your move list in a game is helpful, but it doesn't instruct you on the overall strategy for that character. A good guide will Matt's highlight the most song, important tools your character has and how yeah. to use those tools to win. When you watch a guide, don't expect to internalize to everything that all at once. Boy. That's a ton of information, and it's Aria. just not realistic. I've watched the same guides over and over again over the course of weeks, months, and even years. Every time I rewatch, I'll notice the things that I've learned and incorporated into my play, and I'll make note of the things that I still need to do. In terms of written resources, that's going to depend on the game you're playing. Guilty Gear and other Arxis games have comprehensive guides on dustloop.com. A lot of Tekken info is in Google spreadsheets that get passed around on Reddit. Figuring out where your game lives online is just a matter of Googling. As you watch and read, hop into training mode and work on a few bread and butter combos. Don't worry about optimizing yet. You need to develop your muscle memory to the point where you can hit your combos at all. A few days after I picked up Tekken, I got on Twitter and posted a video of me hitting King's most basic, unoptimized combo. And people I did went, it, get I good, said, you fucking and try And commenter might have asked, no. Did what? This will be a pattern that repeats over your time in fighting games. You're going to put a lot of effort into mastering things that to outsiders appear inconsequential and to experts insignificant. But that doesn't mean it's not an accomplishment. Good job. But nailing combos only accounts for a tiny, tiny percentage of what goes into playing a match. And the only way to start figuring that out is to fight. Fight a human. Sitting here on this screen for the first time can be scary. 
I mean, maybe not for you. Maybe you're some sort of real fucking cool guy. But for me, not knowing what would happen when I hit that matchmake button was nerve-wracking. Another real human being is about to see you fumble around with your buttons and drop your combos and forget to block in real time. But it's okay. It'll be fine. As intimidating as that human-to-human connection is, it's also absolutely core to the joy of fighting games. Now, I'm not saying there's no value to fighting the CPU. I I don't get it. It is a good way to keep learning your own character's moveset and develop muscle. Yeah, yeah, playing the game. It can also help you familiarize yourself with the capabilities. Hopefully, what you want to do. You don't want to be in customization mode. You want to play the game. Whoa, two different fireballs. But once you've mentally logged that stuff, there's not much more it can do to prepare you for fighting a real person. Despite advances in fighting game AI, the CPU won't string those moves together like a human opponent, and fighting a robot is just not as fun. Ranked anxiety. So, uh, of of breath, course, I get set it. Your expectations but low you don't have to play ranked. Button. And again, how many people pick up a fighting game buttons. to play against Most a fighting CPU? Most fighting games are have a couple of options, so let's go over those. I, I get the casual Ranked market that might want to do story skill mode skill and all of that, of different metrics, then But I feel like this video is not very casual. Same skill level. Usually there's some sort of meta progression here, as you earn new titles or badges or, in the case of Strive, literally move towards the top of a tower. The obvious pro here is that as a new player, you should be paired up with other new players, so you'll actually have a chance of winning, and winning feels good. The con is that even when you're fighting for fake online points, that sense that you're being evaluated changes everything. Getting bumped down a level after a losing streak can be really demoralizing. It also changes the behavior of your opponents. Still haven't transcended humanity, huh? You lack discipline. Separating your self-worth from your performance Was that can be tough, voice? and it makes some people act oh. really silly. It can cause people to get obsessive about their win rates. <laughs> they might God. duck you in matchmaking oh, if you play Jesus. a character that they have a hard time against. They might nice bail out of the set the moment they lose. They might send Jesus. you nasty messages. Quick tip on this if you're worried about getting shit from toxic players, lock down your message settings ahead of time. Now I know I just listed a lot of cons that make ranked sound like shit, but it's actually fine. The other option is unranked. Here the matchmaking will just stick you with another player, any other player, or you'll meet up in some sort of virtual arcade setting. <sighs> Unlike ranked play, there's no digital clout on the line, so people are much more likely to play long sets. That's a good thing. I, I don't know, but it's like, it's, I feel like people who play these games, be it Dota, MOBA, Tekken, there is no chill with them. I, I, I've always gotten the feeling that even if it's unranked, people are like very sweaty, can't take a loss, petty, ego driven. I, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like it doesn't even matter if it's ranked or unranked. People are like... People can't take a loss, like, no matter what. Their, evil, uh, their ego is there, no matter if rank points are, are at stake or not. Thing. In fighting games, even at the highest level of play, there's always an adjustment period between- I, I, I've played quick match in Tekken 7. People key charge and plug. I'm like, what? Between <laughs> opponents. Pro players have the knowledge and experience to tune up quickly, but for beginners it takes longer. Let's say your opponent is using a technique that keeps blowing you up. You might not have time to run to a website and look up the frame data, but in a long set, you do have more opportunities to rummage through your toolkit and try to find something that will solve your problem. And if you find a solution, you have the chance to test it out repeatedly and start burning it into your muscle memory. The most obvious downside to unranked matchmaking is that you might get paired up with somebody who is way way better than you. But that's not really a downside in my opinion. Losing 20 matches to a very experienced player is a great way to learn. You learn- uh, I, I just- uh, he definitely has a point, but I don't like that at all. And th this is actually a huge problem when you pick up a fighting game that might not be doing too well. It's like, uh, if you play any of the fighting games, uh, I, I'm sure King of Fighters, I don't know how well King of Fighters is doing right now on Steam, but it's probably not doing like as well as Tekken, for example. What happens to those games is like, the casual players pick them up and they drop them immediately. So that when you go in and play the game, there's not a whole lot of players there. And the matchmaking really suffers. So when I played like the DNF Duel for the first time, like a few weeks ago, 
I'm only, even though I set the rank settings, like, please someone around my rank, please someone around my rank, the game can't find anyone, so it, it, it puts me against these experienced players, and I'm completely new, and I get blown up. Blown up, blown up, blown up, blown up, and I'm like, I don't even know what's going on. Whoa, 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 triple perfect, triple, whoa, 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 triple perfect, triple, death combo, death combo. And I'm like, D yeah, it, you can learn in this environment playing against a much stronger player, but I just get completely demoralized. Completely demoralized. And you would see this in Virtua Fighter also. Remember, it was re released, a remaster, a, a couple of months ago. Everyone downloads, drops it immediately, I come in a few days after release and the game's dead on arrival, and I go in, lowest rank, and here comes someone who's been playing Virtua Fighter for 20 years, one of these hardcores who will never drop the game no matter what, and you just die, and it's just like, well this isn't very motivating. I'm completely new. I don't want to play against people who have been playing for fucking years and just get ass blasted over and over. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, to me, it's like the opposite of motivation. I want to learn the game with someone who's, who can be on my level or slightly above. Do you know how long it takes to figure out a game if you're going up against... If you're brand new and you're going up against someone who's been playing for a year? It's like... <laughs> okay, good luck. Learn which of your reliable strategies aren't really viable against better players. And you get to see the strength of good fundamentals. And you'll see something that you are very unlikely to see in the beginner ranks. The power... Rock hard. It's definitely better to play against someone who's better than you. That's how you learn. But when you have these games where you know the matchmaking is fundamentally broken because everyone who's casual just leaves the game and you're left with the veterans who just keep playing that series no matter what, the gap is suddenly so huge that you just get obliterated. There's nothing you can do. It, it, perfect, perfect, perfect. And it's like, and then you lose 50 matches in a row, and then you you say, I'll, I'll play something else. And that, that, those games are almost cursed in that way. It's like, uh, they really want to grow these games, like King of Fighters but, and Virtua Fighter, but unfortunately it's like, you have a couple of hardcore uh, elites left, and the casuals don't, they just leave. Of not pressing buttons. When the, and, and honestly, this is a human psychology kind of thing. It, it, apparently, th this, this is seen even in fucking rats. It's like, a tiny rat fights a big rat. Big rat wins most of the time. But if a tiny rat isn't given a win once in a while, uh, he will stop playing. He doesn't want to play anymore with the big rat. And, and ki kids do the same, human beings do the same thing, and kids. You have to give, uh, you have to let the other one come out on top once in a while, otherwise they lose motivation. So when you're new in Tekken, it's, it, if you're very patient, you're okay with losing 80% of the time. But one in five matches, you, you better win, because otherwise your motivation just dies. You can't just lose over and over and over and over. You will say, I, I don't want to play anymore. So When I started playing unranked Tekken, I would fight opponents who felt like absolute brick walls. They would just block, block punish, and whiff punish. Every loss was the result of me overextending and using unsafe options. So I tried to emulate their style, and gradually I got better. I still love hitting buttons, though. Anyways, both ranked and unranked are valuable. If you stop having fun with one, try the other for a bit. And on the topic of having fun... That thing, struggle. You lose. Isn't it past your bedtime? At the end of a fighting game match, you win or you lose. There's no teammates to yeah. blame for not pulling their weight. There's no XP meter sliding up to reward you for your participation. You will, beyond a shadow of a doubt, lose a lot. Self-doubt and frustration can feel overwhelming when you're in the thick of it, but it is all a part of the process of getting better. <laughs> so here are a few no, tips for getting this. through it. Separate your self-worth from your performance. Okay, I know this is kind of like saying stop being mentally ill, but it still needs to be said. You are not your win-loss ratio. 
Getting demoted doesn't mean you suck as a person, even if it feels like <laughs> that. And if you start that feeling that you way, suck as it's a time person. to take a damn break. I would just Taking a break doesn't just people let you cool don't off. evaluate you themselves. When your hands their are character off the joystick and you're doing for how they else, do in your ranked battle in Tekken. turning on those situations, God looking for damn. the solutions that you couldn't find in the heat of the moment. Your body is rewiring neuron pathways to make your execution smoother and better. Playing fighting games feels a bit more like a traditional skill-based hobby. Like Here you could just say, go out once in a while, hit the gym, work out, look after yourself, maintain relationships with people. Do you know what people put all of their self-worth into a game? But they play eight hours per day and go, ah, I must win. And if they lose, they have an identity crisis. It's because their whole identity revolves around that game. So I can't stress enough. All the time, have a balance in life. Your identity, it should be consistent of multiple identities. Pete at work. Pete at the gym. Pete with girlfriend. Pete family man. Pete with friends. Pete with other hobby. Don't become someone who obsesses with one game and you tie all of your self-worth to that game. If your identity is the game, a loss will lead to a fucking identity crisis. Because that's all you have, and now you feel you suck at that, so, so you are meaningless. You have nothing. So you can't stress that enough to, to, to be mentally stable and live a good life, in my opinion. You need a balance in life. Right. So that's what Playing you should guitar. say there, in my opinion. There's a base level of effort and self-direction. You need to get enjoyment out of it. That means that you won't always have the mental energy to do it. And that's okay. Don't force it. A break from fighting games can be a couple hours or a couple months. The games will still be there when you get back, and your body will remember what to do. Watch replays. God, this one is so hard. It's like hearing your voice in a recording or seeing yourself on video. Do I really do that? You do, but it's so valuable and you can't neglect it. Most fighting games keep a log of your most recent matches with the ability to play them back. You should take advantage of that. Seeing yourself play can help you recognize habits that you want to correct. It can also help you appreciate what you do well and what you want to do more of. And when you're feeling really brave, take the next step. Show your gameplay to someone else and ask them for tips. But before you can do that, first you need... <laughs> <laughs> Lord Beck Dosan. This can be one of the greatest joys of fighting games. Find friends the fighting in the community. Game community is the name there of are the good collective, people. but it's Find not them. monolithic. There are My hundreds God, does that help with motivation? of communities out there for fighting games. Some are game specific, some are character specific. Some are geared towards certain demographics and skill levels. Do some Googling and ask around on Twitter until you find a place that feels good for you. Whether it's folks you meet through these communities or your own network of friends, playing fighting games against someone you know is so good. <laughs> for me, knowing who's on the other side of the connection completely obliterates the frustration and antagonism that I can feel playing against random online opponents. Partially because it's just more humanizing when you know that person, but also because you can ask questions and chat. If you're in a good community, your opponent isn't going to keep any secrets. Because people who have decided that they want to get good at fighting games have signed an unspoken contract of mutual self-improvement. Iron sharpens iron. Fighting stronger opponents makes you stronger. So a good sparring partner will explain exactly how and why they're winning. Until it's time to compete. Very well then. Far be it from me to turn down a challenge. And for a fellow pugilist. Through your community or oh. just by being online, you might come across some online tournaments, and you should sign up for them. Tournaments are really cool. They offer you the chance to do a lot of things that you won't get in your casual play. First of all, it's one of the few times you and your buddies will step into that magic circle of competition, mutually and temporarily agreeing to set aside the helpful hints and just going all out, seeing who will win. If you're used to mostly playing friendlies, it's fun to try out a different vibe. The other useful thing is that it's fucking scary. At first. The first few times I did online tournaments, I literally got shaky and sweaty. I forgot my combos and I mashed buttons. But each time I did it, it got easier. 
and once you've played under pressure, you'll be better in casual settings. Random matchmaking doesn't get my heart rate up like it used to. Finally, a lot of tournaments are streamed on Twitch, which means you might get a chance to rewatch the VOD and hear someone commentate your match. Like a lot of parts of the fighting game process, this can make you feel vulnerable, but a good commentator will put into clear terms what's going on, and that can be an incredible learning tool. They've proven they're pretty good at fighting out of the corner. Already, Doubleman now back thrown into the corner. Again, huge life deficit, but the other way around. Gets hit by the stomps. No, but drops it at the target combo. That's there is no end. The re... The end. One of okay. the many wonderful and intimidating things about fighting games is that there's no prescribed end goal for your participation. There's no final boss or end game treadmill. Even the best player in the world is only the best until someone surpasses them. No matter oh, there where is you are no in your end, journey, right. in some sense, you're still at the beginning. That means you won't always know the next step forward, but it also means you're never falling behind. And as long as you're on that path, learning and having fun, you're doing it right. Yeah. That's uh, simply an amazing video by this guy. Like, uh, that must have taken a lot of time to write, record. The editing is great. The points he makes are great. I mean, I can only agree with pretty much everything he said. And towards the end where he said, you know, again, he stressed, just remember to have fun. Uh, the only thing I would add is that when you look up these communities, fighting game communities, be it on Discord, Reddit, different websites, interacting with community members, the only thing I would add is that it, the environment can quickly become a little bit elitist. This is not something unique to fighting games. You'll see this in, honestly, any very competitive game. Fighting games are very competitive. So it's not unique to fighting games. Um, I would just stress, like, uh, don't listen to people who say you should play the game a certain way or get good, learn the matchup. Like if, if a character annoys you, for example, there's nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. You don't owe anyone a rematch. In my opinion, you're here for yourself and you, you've bought this game with your money and you're trying to have fun with the game. So in my opinion, don't force yourself to do things you don't find fun be it uh, playing a certain character you dislike, but this character is going to give me wins or fighting a particular character. If you don't like that, don't do it. In my opinion, don't force anything. The longer you can have fun with the game, the, the better, you know, so don't, don't, don't force anything. Try to just organically have fun with the game. And another thing he didn't mention is the importance of taking breaks from games. Like people don't understand this, but Sometimes if you plateau in a competitive game, taking a week long break can have you come back with completely fresh new eyes and, you, and stuff that uh, you didn't see before will suddenly be very apparent to you with, with fresh eyes. And it's also in a week, it's, it's like it clears your system also of like stress and frustration that can build up. Especially if you play a certain game for hours on end every day and you're grinding, 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 and you might be stressed. You're like, ah, I'm not improving, you know, I'm not winning more, blah, blah. Take a week long break. I, I, I don't know how many times I've done that and I've come back a much stronger player. Way more patient and, and seeing things I didn't see before. So that's something I can't stress enough, like the importance of taking breaks. And especially, again, it ties into this having fun thing. If you're feeling stressed, it's, you're like, I'm starting to dislike Tekken a little bit. Take a goddamn break. Be it a week or two weeks, and then see when you come back if, oh, I feel more energized now and I feel more positive towards the game. Uh, very important and very underrated. But uh, incredible video. Uh, really well put together. Uh, thanks so much for making it, Mr. Polygon. I know he can't hear me, but uh, man, this is a big uh, contribution to the community.